It's the Vanarama Conference North playoff final. There's no time for hilarious phone calls or um, soft drink commercials. We just need to get straight into this match. Hello and welcome to part 10 of the Bolton Battle. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode it is the Vanarama Conference North Player Final against Macclesfield Town. Um, I'm a little upset because we're away and um, it's just being played at the Macclesfield ground which just seems stupid because their ground holds about 3,000 people whereas... I mean, they could have put it at a neutral venue with lots of people in attendance. They could have put it at our ground with 28,000 people there. But no, I guess it's because they finish higher in the league. Um, we get to go and play at their ground, which seems a little bit silly. Um, on the news report for it, um, which is around here somewhere. Where do we get the news report? Something to do with tickets. Yeah, sellout expected. There we go. Um, 5,000 tickets. Um <laughs> 3,000 of them are going to be Bolton fans. So we're filling half the ground. Um, that should be reason in itself for just moving it to Bolton. But we'll we'll play in Macclesfield if that's what we have to do. Um, we know we're capable of beating them. We beat them on the last game of the season. I'm not sure what happened in the... In fact, we beat them away. So we've beaten them twice this season. So you'd like to think it's a game we should be capable of going there and winning. Um, but you know how this game is sometimes. We had the awesome uh, turnaround in the semi-final, so hopefully we've not used up all our run good um, and we can have one last awesome performance and secure a promotion in our first season, which would be marvellous. Um, this is the team that we're playing today. Um, I'm not sure if there's any changes. I don't think there are. Um, we're sticking with Hipwell and Priest up front. We're sticking with Johnson at right back. They were the only real decisions I had to make. Um, Carlin Kane comes back in at centre back. That's the one change. Um, just because we're not playing um, Darlington anymore. So we can play with our first choice centre back in there. Um, because in theory, they're not going to batter us. And they, I mean, this was the back, back three that we played when we beat them on the last day of the season. In fact, this might be the exact team we played that day, although thinking about it, I think we had Scriven in at right back and Millington in up front that day. But enough waffle. Let's get into this game. Um, I'm nervous and excited. Um, we're the favourites for him. Oh, for goodness sake, they're playing free at the front, free up front. Probably should have kept Price in at the back. Um, but, you know, the these things. Everyone's everyone's a hundred percent match fit. Everyone's high on morale. We we couldn't be in better shape going into this match. Other than the fact it would have been quite nice to have Tom Bannister fit to play at left back and Ben Probert in up front. But we haven't needed him over the last few games. So hopefully the three at the back can continue for a little bit longer and we can secure a spot in the Vanarama National League. And Chris Priest has just scored after five minutes. We're one nil up. Oh, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. That's what the creak... If you keep hearing creaking and uh, squeaking noises from my chair, it's because I am literally sat on the edge of it. So Cross comes in from Johnson. Priest just tucks it away. I mean, how many times this season have we seen that exact goal? That's how Bolton Wanderers score their goals. Uh, cross from Paul Johnson, knocked in by Chris Priest. We're very good at it. And it's good to see it happening today. Fletcher now on the edge of the area. Don't have any idea what he's capable of doing with it there. Not a lot really, but finds Johnson who gets it up to Hipwell. And I'm so behind on this commentary. I may as well stop trying to commentate. Use your words, man. Right. Oh, they've got a player called Chitty. That's a fantastic name. I might try and sign him. Oh, now I've mentioned him. He's going to score. That's just frustrating. Oh, <sighs> Macclesfield have hit the post. Right, that, hopefully that's just a little warning for us that we can't get too complacent. Yes, we know we can beat this team. Yes, we're already in the lead. But they are capable of getting back into it. And we've given away a penalty. For goodness sake, come on, Leach. Don't fail us now. Let's have a nice penalty save to really get the excitement going. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, that you know, we, we can, we've, we've come back from far worse quite recently so hopefully that's just a little blip I mean Leach should have saved that both his hand and his foot are pretty much on the spot of where that penalty went how has he not kept that out very upsetting right Johnson trying to get in a position to cross again he doesn't but May got in a fantastic position and really should have scored that's a clear-cut chance some nice passing from us it's not after not often that we can string passes together the way we just did. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't result in a goal. Priest now to Johnson. Johnson with the cross and Lamb makes no mistake. He's put that away. That's his 10th goal of the season. He's our left back um, or left wing back. Anyway, I know he's spent maybe half the season playing in central midfield. But still, from either of those positions, to get 10 goals is 
a pretty impressive return and um, a bit of an unsung hero for us and um, has recently signed a new contract as well so he was another one of the ones who was holding out he's going to be here next year we've pretty much tied everyone that we want to keep down to new deals at this point there's a couple of uh oh we're in again hipwell's made it 3-1 he hasn't yet signed a new deal not because he's holding out when he was for a little while he now is willing to discuss terms i'm not quite sure whether we want to keep him but Obviously, he's just scored another goal. I mean, he's one of the ones where I'm thinking, if we don't get promoted, we'll probably keep him because he scored a whole load of goals for us this season. If we go up, there might be better options and he earns quite a lot of money. So that's the thinking there. We'll, we'll make a decision. He'll probably end up sticking around anyway, especially if we get a bigger wage budget. But a couple of things up in the air. Basically, the only people who I've tied down at the moment are our normal sort of 12, 13, 14 players who've played a lot of games. Anyone who's been a fringe player we've not got on a new contract yet. Paul Johnson has three assists today. That is quite ridiculous. Whew, that's a nice first half. I can live with that. More of the same, please, lads. And we we get a promotion in our first year. See, anything Daddy can do, we can do almost as good because obviously he won the Conference North and we're in the playoffs. But still, you know, we're we're yeah we're a bigger club as well but ignore all of that this is still a good season regardless of what happens in the next 45 minutes this has been a good season um obviously it would be devastating to throw it away from here though hodgson with the corner kane probably should have gotten the end of that we've had four clear-cut chances now but macclesfield have had three it's very much end-to-end -end, um everyone throwing everything at it trying to get that promotion spot which is quite nice nice for it not to be a cagey affair they've just hit the crossbar they've Oh, it's gone in. We've now had him hit the post and hit the crossbar in this game. And I'm not really sure how that's ended up in the back of the net. Cannon's back off the crossbar. And it's just scrappy. And again, Leach should probably do a little bit better. Fletcher's in there as well. Somebody should just be putting their boot through that and getting rid of it. And we've gone back into the game and suddenly the pitch looks like it's frosted over. Um, I don't know if that's as a direct result of that last goal. But there certainly weren't all those white bits on the pitch. Um, a minute ago, that's bizarre. It's May. How has that happened? Priest has just made it 4-2. Perhaps that might defrost the pitch a little bit. Let's see if we have a frosty pitch in 3D. Uh, no, see, pitch is fine there. Brilliant. Um, Hipwell tucks it across to Priest, who just smashes it. I mean, he's never missing from there. It's not actually particularly well placed, but he hits it with such power that it was never getting saved. Um, right, substitutions, substitutions. Um, oh, why have I got Bannister on the bench? He's injured. He can't. I mean, Frankie Penn should be sat just there, and then he could come straight on for Glover. Um, as it is, I might bring Gavin Stewart on for Glover and just drop back to a normal midfield three. We've done this a couple of times. I don't think you've seen me do it yet. Um, but certainly when we're just trying to keep hold of a game, we do that. We go control um, just to make sure nothing silly happens. Um, and that's the only change I'm going to make at the moment. I mean, we're, we're playing well. We don't need to be messing around with the, the formula too much, he says, having just changed the system completely. Um, in fact, Stewart probably should be the box-to-box -box midfielder. Should he, maybe? Yeah, that's how it should be. May in the middle, because he's the better tackler. Right, so we've got the club captain on now, playing like his third game ever for us. He's not going to be here next season. Um, he just hasn't been able to get into this team. Although he's been hovering around on the bench for the last... Six weeks of the season or so after a long injury. Oh, no, they're in again. And we've taken off half of our attacking threat. Do we go defensive at this point? I mean, that they've scored our goal. He's a mile offside, surely. But that's exactly the kind of goal we score. Cross from deep. Striker in space scores. Um, do we need a change? We haven't really got... We're so threadbare at the moment. We just don't really have a change to make. Um... I'm thinking we perhaps bring on Philip Price Philip Price for May and move O'Brien up into midfield as a defensive player there. Who can play covering here, though? We'll put Fletcher there, I guess, because he's the most experienced of the three. Um, and just try and have O'Brien breaking the ball, breaking the play down a little bit in midfield. Hopefully we can hold on. We've got three minutes two minutes one minute to hold on we do not want a last minute goal here surely now the game is over i mean we're a minute and a half over time um oh no and they've got the ball if they score here that's hideous and we just won't come back from it um 
Johnson heads clear. Where's the full-time whistle? There it is. And we're in the Conference National. Yes, we're happy with that. That will do very nicely. Um, one last look at the frosty pitch for some reason. Yeah, we haven't got time to look at England. Let's get into let's get into what David's up to. We'll leave the match and hopefully see what our budgets are going to be for next year. Um, yeah, we don't... Oh, see, this, this whole England thing, very silly. Get out of the way, England. Here we are. This is what we want to see. So, we're promoted, which we already knew about. Hurrah! Do we get budgets? Budgets? No budgets yet. I'm used to Premier League where you get the budgets as soon as you know whether you're in the Champions League or not. That's a little bit disappointing. Um, in fact, no, this is still England. Change manager. Here we go. Now let's see some budgets. Ah, budgets. There we go. Oh, that's a... Oh, we've actually got a transfer budget. Right, we've got a massive increase on our wage budget. Our wage budget was £13,000 a week, thirteen and a half. We're now got 22,000 available to us and we're we're only committed to spending seven and a half we've got money to spend and loads of wages to throw around this is going to be an interesting summer um let's have a little look do a little bit of a review of the team and um, before we depart for a few days from the Bolton battle because um after this we're going to be having Kevin Chapman's final hurrah as England manager he's already said he's retiring at the end of the World Cup there'll be no more hanging around um not least because it's annoying having two managers in here all the time as you've just seen um so it's his last chance to try and win a well his first chance to try and win a world cup as well but his last chance to try and break into the worldwide hall of fame as well that he's sat just outside of at the moment but we'll have a review of this bolton team before we move on to that so firstly if we sort this by average ratings you'll see that we've had several real standout players and i'm not that i want to back myself as someone who can spot a player but player of the season, we identified him before the season even started as he was going to be a key man. And what a key man Tony Hodgson has been. Um, yes, he's only got one goal in 45 appearances, but 10 assists, 11 man of the matches, an average rating of 7.74. Far better than he's ever been in the previous two seasons for Bolton. And he's the Conference North player of the season by quite a long way. Very impressive season for him. Chris Priest, very important. 7.3 um, average rating. Has weighed in with 29 goals in 47 games in all competitions. Yes, a lot of them were in the Cup. But as the season's gone on, he's actually started scoring in the league as well. It's his best ever league return. Best ever season. Um, he's going to be an important man for us next year. And Paul Johnson, um, bordering on Lazaroff levels of assists from right back. Um, in all competitions, 24 assists, 23 assists in the league, actually, 23 assists in 38 games from right back. I mean, that's uh, there's not many players who've done better than that um, in my in this save. Um, and I think, I mean, we are, let's see how that compares with Lazarov. Lazarov. There he is, Vladislav Lazarov. What was his best season for Ipswich? He did 29 in 38. So... Johnson not quite as good but he's younger um, and hopefully will improve on that next season I mean if he gets anywhere near that in a division above that'd be brilliant Colin Lamb very important very versatile can play in midfield can play down the left um, spent a lot of time at left wing back as the season's gone on we already identified in that match his goal return has been fantastic for what's primarily a defensive player and he's had a very good season and good performances as well. Darren O'Brien in on loan, Adam May we signed. Callum Hipwell, 22 goals from 24 starts is a fantastic return. Frankie Penn, 10 goals from 21 starts in midfield. Ben Probert, 15 goals, um, having come in primarily just to be a target man to set stuff up for other people. Weighed him with his fair share of goals as well. And Andre Glover, who broke into the side ahead of Frankie Penn at about the halfway point of the season weighing in with plenty of goals as well in fact if we sort that by goals there are goals all through this team and that has been the story of the season goals galore um so plans for next season if we have a look how do we filter this by contracts contract info there we go um why doesn't it tell us when they no that's general info contract info that's what we want so the players currently out of contract who we need to make decisions on leon, leon scriven probably going to let him go tom bannister bit injury prone probably will let him go at the at best we'll keep him on as a backup left back um so that we don't have to change the system every time our left back gets injured next year like we have this year although the three, three at the back has served us well the two times we've had to revert to it that's where the two manager of the month awards have come from um kylan kane might keep him on as a backup callum hipwell now we've got all that extra money we'll probably keep him on as a backup as well frankie penn likewise um but 
at the back of my mind I'm thinking these players who couldn't get in a team in the Conference North should we be keeping on as backups for the next level up or should we be trying to replace them let me know in the comments what you would do would you be keeping these players on uh, especially those four really who have made quite a big contribution to the season part of me thinks just as a gesture of loyalty give them another year just to say thank you very much lads um, oddly we're a part time club and most of our players are full time I've just noticed which is odd. Perhaps we'll go full-on professional full-time again next year. Pierce Millington we're going to let go because he's done nothing. Gavin Stewart we'll probably let go as well. Joel McDonald is already gone and obviously we won't have Darren O'Brien on loan again next year. Everyone else is on for another year. So that is the story of the first season of the Bolton Battle. We've made it out of the um, we've made it out of the Conference North for the first time since. The 26-27 season, so it's nearly it's been nine years since Bolton have reached the heady heights of the Conference National, and hopefully it's the first step towards making this into a rather nice looking U-shaped graph, um, which will ultimately culminate in us getting our highest league finish ever, which is the goal of what we're trying to achieve here. So, as I said before, there'll be a few days break from the Bolton battle now, um, and it'll basically be for as long as England are in the World Cup. So if we win the World Cup, it'll probably be a four or five day break. If we get knocked out in the group stages, I'll be back day after tomorrow with, with summer transfers and stuff from Bolton. So it's an excellent point for you to uh, get caught up on the series. Let me know in the comments what you would do, because it's going to be um, certainly a few days gap. We don't usually get that luxury, but I'm not likely to play these games until after, uh, sorry, not likely to start making transfers until after this episode out, which is a bit unusual. It gives you the opportunity to tell me what you'd do, where would you strengthen, who would you let go, who would you offer the new deals to. Um, and yeah, we'll be back, hopefully, for another successful season next year. At the very least, let's try not to get relegated like we did with Boston, because at the moment, David Chapman's mirroring his dad's career. Promotion in the first season. Let's hope we don't have relegation in the second, because we can't jump clubs this time, and we don't want to be stuck back down here again in two years' time, trying to battle out of the Conference North again. If you've enjoyed that episode, and if you've enjoyed that first season, please pop a like on there for me. It would be wonderful to get to 100 likes on an episode where we have secured a promotion. Um... Thanks for the support and everything so far. Make sure you comment, share, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Um, and thank you very much for watching.